Hey everyone, welcome back to my new series, Walkie Check, where I interview a variety of industry professionals. We dive into how they got started in their career, how they became successful, all while answering questions that newbies need to know on how to jumpstart their career in that department. In this video, I interview Alice Stanley, a professional screenwriter. Check it out. Today I'm interviewing Alice Stanley, a writer for film, television, and theater, and a dramaturg. I actually met Alice at ASU when I was a freshman. She was my screenwriting TA. Along with successfully writing and selling a number of plays and scripts, she's also been a writer's assistant on Wine Country, a staff writer for Busy Tonight, an on-set writer for an upcoming Netflix film, Moxie, directed by Amy Poehler, and she's currently a creative consultant for the 2020 GLAAD Awards. So when I, um, I, like, I knew that you had done like Wine Country, Busy Tonight, and then I saw Moxie in the GLAAD Awards, I was like, oh my gosh, like, you're doing so many crazy things. Like, I'm so proud of you, one. And two, it just makes me really curious, like how you've been able to move and continue on these roles and so I guess my first question is how did you get started yeah so well my first job in film and tv was wine country as a writer's assistant and I came through that I know every person says this but they're always like it was such a weird way because that's the only way to get your first job yeah but I was working I was living in Chicago doing comedy so I was doing like improv and sketch at the theater the second city um which is, like, pretty, you know, famous comedy theater, and they have, like, a lot of famous alums. So I had won the sketch competition there, and I had met, through winning that competition, this writer named Liz Kakowski, and we, like, Skyped, we hit it off, and we stayed in touch, and I, like, kept working for Second City. I, like, toured with them. I was, like, trying to get my foot in the TV writing world, and then eventually, like, I wrote a pilot and sent it to Liz, and then she a couple months later asked if I wanted to be her writer's assistant for this movie she wrote, which was Wine Country. Wow. So it's like, it's funny because if I'm saying that, like meeting someone right away, I'm like, oh, I worked at Second City and then I met someone who wrote Wine Country and then I was the assistant. Mm -hmm. But actually it took like three years. So how was it working on Wine Country? Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And I think... I believe that I was the only person on the crew who was, like, their first movie. Like, even every PA had worked on, like, a million other shows before. So it felt very, like, it was very scary because I was, like, I truly don't know. I was learning so fast, everything. Mm -hmm. But it was also amazing because for that to be my first job and to literally see, like, all my high school idols every yeah. day. Right? Like, improvising and acting and being hilarious. I mean, that's just, it's the dream. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. So what was your like actual like job? Like as a writer's assistant, like what do they really do? Yeah, it's not a common job on films. I've learned um, in TV, it's a lot of like you take notes for what's going on in the room and you are sending out those notes to people. And it's way, I mean, like every TV show has a writer's assistant. Um, my job on the film was mainly keeping track of the improv mm. um, because it was so many improvisers were starring in that movie. So it was like, they would do a take and I would like write down all the things that they said or added and then when we turned around to get the next shot or whatever I would have like typed up all the jokes printed them out given them to everyone so we could do it again mm -hmm. um so it was weird my job was kind of to be the conduit of like making the improv happen more than once um, that sounds so, so stressful <laughs> It was sometimes it was like a little bit stressful because I was like typing so rapidly, like trying to get all the best jokes, you know, and mm -hmm. like I never want to miss anything. But most of the time it was just really fun and hilarious. And then also like obviously being the writer's assistant, I was like in charge of updating the script and sending it out to production and like, you know, getting the writer a taco when she was hungry or whatever. So it was <laughs> like all that other stuff too. From Wine Country on to what I think was your next credit, right? Busy Tonight? Yeah. How did that happen? Amy Poehler's company made Wine Country, and then Busy Tonight was produced by Tina Fey's company. Mm -hmm. So I had, like, kind of met, you know, I met Tina, like, in passing on Wine Country, but through that connection, like, those two companies basically were just, like, Amy's company recommended me to Tina's company, and I started as the researcher on that show. So how was working on Busy Tonight? Oh, another total dream. It yeah. was, like, 
you know, I love feminist comedy, and that was, like, such a ultra-feminist, mm-hmm. funny, weird show. <laughs> it was, like, I, I forget, I think it was 89% staffed by women. Like, it was really supportive environment, really funny. It's fun to work on a new show and, like, just create something mm-hmm. from the ground up. Yeah, it was amazing. So did you go from being a researcher to a writer on the show? Yeah, I actually had one other bump in the middle, but it was very short-lived, which was I was the researcher, um, which meant I was like, I mean, you just do all the research for the show, like fact-checking and also researching all the guests that come on because mm-hmm. it's a late show. But then also I was like pitching creative ideas um, and like pitching jokes kind of under the table. So once I had done a lot of that creative work, I got a teeny bump and was then like the research associate producer because I was doing so much creative stuff. And I think I only had that position for like a month before someone left the writing team and then I got promoted to writer. Oh, wow. So for people that want to get started and maybe like want to join a writing staff or sell their first script, you know, what kind of advice do you have for them? Obviously, it's so different for everyone. So who can ever fully say, but this is what I have seen, which is... One, let everybody know exactly what you're after Um, because people don't know. Like, nobody knows. And I think you're just, it's so easy to, like, get in your own little world and see all these people around you and assume that they're chill doing what they're doing. But you have to tell people what you want. So, like, for instance, like, the PAs at at Busy Tonight all wanted different things. Mm -hmm. And if any of them had been like, I actually want to be a writer, would you read my sample? I'd be like, absolutely. Um, but like no one did that so I'm not going to just go up to them and be like do you have a dream like that's weird (laughs) Um, so I would say let everybody know what you're after so if you're like I want to be a writer's PA truly I know it sounds so annoying but like email a hundred people like anybody that you know from college or high school or like your family you'd be surprised like I've totally met people in the industry who are like I had no connections, so I asked everyone in my family, and my aunt's best friend, like, whatever, worked a desk at a place, and then they got to be a PA, and then that person kept being like, I actually want to be a writer's PA, and then when, you know, the next season started, they got that job. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you don't tell people what you're looking for, they can't help you get it, and just tell a lot of people. The other thing you don't want to do is, like, be a PA and go up to, like, the director and be like, just so you know, I want to be a director. Like, (laughs) maybe not the time. Right. But when, like, I'm sitting in the office, like, chilling, eating a snack, and, like, a PA comes in to take out the trash, and I'm like, what are you doing? What's your weekend like? Like, what's, what are you up to? Like, clearly, like, I was friends with all those people. Mm -hmm. I liked them, and we would talk. So, like, that's a good time to talk then. Mm -hmm. Uh, But probably when you're, like, in the middle of doing your job, it's not a good time to be, like, just so everyone knows, <laughs> I'm actually an actor. Like, uh-oh. Yeah. But then especially with, like, your family and friends, oh, my gosh, blow them up. Like, that's the, definitely the time to be like, this is what I'm after. I want to do this. Because you just never know who has the connection. And it's, like, the best and worst thing about this industry that it really is all who you know, which everyone always says. But, like, I think for me at least there was a little part of me that was like it is who you know but also like if you're just good enough and you just like can keep being really good eventually like magically you'll just get a job but you could be the best you could be like the brightest pearl in the world but if you're in an oyster no one will ever see you you Mm -hmm. know what I mean so like you gotta it's annoying but you just gotta say what you want yeah that's great advice um so for people that may not have all that onset experience or won't be on set to kind of go and tell people when they're having a snack, hey, I'm interested in being a writer's PA. <laughs> sure. What, like, how can someone find those opportunities? You know, like, I know that you said that you won a contest and that's what opened the door for you. Is there something else that you would suggest, like, people that are trying to start? in the industry that really have no connections at all okay so a couple things like i said contest but also like i think that's another great like there's good advice and bad advice about it because like you know 
some of those contests, it seems like it's an open door for everyone, but, like, it's not, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, um, sometimes they're biased, or, like, whoever ran the contest, like, had their niece win, or whatever, like, it's, so, do contests if it's, like, accessible to you, but, you know, don't go absolutely crazy doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would say, for someone who really has no connections, sometimes a class is really helpful, like, that's, you know, I took a ton of improv classes, and I met all these people, and that at least helped me get better, and some of those people that I met, I'm, like, re-meeting out here in LA, and our lives are so different, like, you know, it's like we met and doing a little dumb improv thing in, like, a basement with four people, and now, you know, four years later, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're on that TV show, and they're like, you just helped on that movie, so you never know who you're going to meet. And then also, I would say, kind of to reiterate my previous point, you never know what connections you even have. Like, mm -hmm. you might have one that you don't even know. Like, if you really blow up all your old professors from your college, some one of them might be like, oh, actually, I do know a writer or something. Yeah, I know you from ASU, right? You were my TA. Yeah. You, you did film for your undergrad, right? So actually, I didn't. I was an English major in my oh, undergrad. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did English and theater, yeah. And when you did your, your grad uh, degree, was it in film? It was in dramatic writing, which is playwriting and screenwriting. How do you feel that impacted your career? Here's what I'll say about like film school, especially grad school. Mm -hmm. um, it was, the good things about it was, were, it was like three years where I could kind of develop my voice, like test some things, I could fail, like I could write something that was really bad and just try it. And um, there was low financial stake in that community. Like, you know, when you go out to a big city, like if you're in LA and you wanna put up a play, you have to like pay for the rehearsal space, probably pay for food for everyone, like do all this marketing. You know, at ASU, I was like, well, I'm going to put up this play. And it's like, well, you get free rehearsal, free theater, free marketing. Everyone's mm -hmm. doing it for free. So it's like you get to learn how to fail without a lot of money. But I say that because I didn't pay any money for school. So, like, I got a full scholarship and TA ships. So to me, it was like, oh, this is fun. Like, there's no consequences for this. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I would say if you're, like, thinking about film school and spending, like, $60,000, that's, like, maybe don't do that. Yeah. And the improv classes that you did were probably not tied to any university, right? Mm -mm, they were tied to theaters. Okay. Are there other, like, resources that you suggest, like, maybe books um, or any classes that are online or anything like that for people that are interested in improving their writing? Yeah, you know, for me, the most helpful person online is the um, showrunner for One Day at a Time, oh, Gloria Calderon. Gloria, yeah. She has, like, the best Twitter account. She's constantly answering writer questions. She also made, I haven't watched that much of it, but the ones I watched, I was like, this is really good. She made, like, a YouTube series. I mm -hmm. think it's called Hollywood 101. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is great. She's just so helpful. Yeah. I I saw those, and, I'm, like, one of my, like, low-key, high-key dreams is to work on Wednesday at a time. <laughs> So I, I follow her Twitter, and I saw all that, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good resource. So I feel like that's huge. That's huge that's happened in the last 10 years that a lot of people in the industry are just so freely giving with their information online. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you're always writing. Like, I always see on your Instagram that you're always at, like, a coffee shop or eating pastry somewhere, <laughs> typing away. Um sure. Is that mostly like your own projects that you're trying to write and sell, or is that something that you're working with with a partner? Like, how do you continue to write and stay busy? Usually, I have like a couple different things in different pools to sort of make sure I've always got my bases covered. Like, you know, right now I'm working on this TV show that I'm developing with a specific production company. So, like, I'll spend, you know, a day a week doing that. And that's like their project that they pitched to me. Um, but, you know, that could, anything, as you know, in this business could fall apart at any time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I do that, but also at the same time, I'm always writing a play because a play I can control. Like, I'm the boss, there's no other 
there's nobody else involved. It's just me. So I'm like, okay, I'm always writing a play. And, um, and then also I'm always like working on my samples so that, you know, like I'm wrote my first pilot, you know, a few years ago, but probably every few months I take it out and I polish it up and I fix things. Um, so it's kind of like hitting all the check marks. So that's Mm -hmm. how I'm always writing. I'm always like doing something to keep me, I don't know active in different parts of my career yeah about your samples so are those samples that you send out to reps or to possible projects to work on so I'm repped I have a manager um so she sends it out more than me but you know whenever I meet a person however you meet people you know at a networking event or through friends or whatever and they're like oh send me something I always want to have like my very best work it's always you know, you never want to send the email that's like, well, here's the current script, but it's, like, not quite where I want it to be. Mm-hmm. Like, you never be saying that, so I always try to make sure it's the best it can be. So can you tell me a little bit more about how you got a manager and what that process was like? In Chicago, I took this playwriting class with a really successful playwright, and he really drilled it into our heads. He was like, do not look for a manager or an agent. Like, they'll look for you. And I know no one wants to hear that, but I was just like, okay, I'll listen to you. <laughs> And so I got my manager after I was staffed on Busy Tonight. So I got my first writing job, joined the WGA, and then my friend, actually someone that I met at ASU, um, he was repped by this woman at this comedy management company. And so once I was like, you know, actually a full-time writer, he was like, okay, well, I'll have my manager read you. And then I met with a bunch of managers because people were like reaching out and contacting me. Um, and then I, I chose her as the best fit. I feel like I hear a lot of times like, oh, you have to be repped or you have to find somebody. And like people are always like just trying to find representation. And so that's yeah. crazy that you're saying it shouldn't be that way, that they should find you. You like never want to be begging for someone to represent you because they're the one who's out there like bragging about you to people. Mm-hmm. So if you're like, I don't have much to offer, but, like, please represent me, then they don't have anything to say. You yeah. have one who's like, oh, my gosh, I really want to work with you because they're the one who's out there taking all these meetings, like, saying all this great stuff about you. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So when I first moved to L.A., one of the things that was, like, very, very noticeable was that everybody had a screenplay. Everybody was writing. Every Even, like... <laughs> When I first came to like visit apartments, like one of the apartment like guys that was giving me a tour, he's like, I'm a screenwriter. <laughs> and so I, I started to wonder like, how do people stand out when they are trying to be a serious screenwriter? Yeah, it's so overwhelming at first. I totally get that. I went through it in Chicago when I first moved there because I was like, improv is like unique and then you move to Chicago which is the improv capital of the world you're like literally every person who I pass on the street does improv um and here it's the same thing with writing it's like if you go to a coffee shop you look around and every single person's computer is open to a script you know (laughs) yeah it's overwhelming so I feel like I don't think there's a way to be like here's how I'm gonna stand out because there's just so many people and it's just such a huge industry and so I think thinking about that way is like you're gonna go nuts trying to stand out from a million people doing the same thing. But what you can do is just keep looking inward and being like, okay, but what am I? Okay, what do I like to write? What are my favorite shows? What's my dream? And create, and this sounds kind of gross, but like really know what your brand is. And when I first heard that, I was like, ew, that's so like corporate to be like, when someone was like, figure out your brand, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm not like, you know, a Target apparel line, mm-hmm. but um, I think taking all that time to be like, well, what is it that I care about? And what do I do that I could say in like a sentence? Um, because I think it's the same thing about like letting people know what you want. If you don't let people know what you are, they can't, they can't work with you because they don't know what you are or who you are. Um, so I feel like instead of standing out, be like, don't think about anyone else. Just like, what am I and what what do I want to do and what can I do? Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, like, being so sure of that makes people want to work with you. So what, like, what would you say your brand is? My brand, cultivated, completely cultivated, is I'm like, 
I write like really cheery, like bubblegum pop, but there's always a dark undercurrent. <laughs> so it's like a super happy character who like is in an existential crisis or like two best friends who meet a ghost, something like that. Okay. I guess I didn't expect that to be the brand, but I, I guess I'm starting to see what you're saying, like what your writing style is, your constant themes, things yeah. like that. Right. Okay. And that was, and that was advice that my writing mentor gave me. She was like, branding, you know, people are afraid of it because it puts you in a little box, but mm -hmm. like, no one knows what to do with a huge box. Like, when you're picking out furniture for your apartment, you're not like, let's find the biggest couch. You're like, let's find a good looking couch. <laughs> yeah. you know? So be like, this is, this is my little box. And then she was like, like her brand is like suburban soccer mom. So she was like, anytime a show has a suburban soccer mom, my manager is like, oh, well, do you want my client? Because she's perfect at writing that part. And then people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You said mentor. And that's like one of the things that I've been kind of trying to figure out is like, how do you find a mentor in this industry? And like, specifically for me, I want to find a woman or a person of color, someone that's interested in like sitcoms and like the things that I'm interested in. Like, how did you go ahead and find your mentor? I think it's a person who you meet who they have offered a little bit to you. Mm -hmm. So like my person, I met her and she was like, oh, well, this was really nice getting to know you. Why don't you send me something? Um, and I feel like that's a huge, that's actually like a huge welcome mat when someone says that to you because they don't have to say that. So I was like, okay. So I sent her something. And then if she was like, well, keep in touch. I was like, well, yeah then whenever I have like a little question you know not like all the time but when I have little professional questions or writing questions I know her door is open that I can ask her so I think it's like you know being aware of these people and also I think sometimes it's like this is painful but sometimes it's kind of going out on a limb and getting shut down yeah. You know, like, there's totally been people I've reached out to, like, I would love to talk sometime because, you know, you have the kind of career I want, and can I buy you coffee, which, like, some people love and some people hate, mm -hmm. and they might just, like, never respond, or they might be like, no, I don't do that, and then you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. Just not being afraid to be rejected. Yeah. 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 So I guess I mentioned, like, a lot of, like, your success, but not necessarily some rejections. How do you deal with being rejected, getting that no. It's like both so refreshing and horrifying that it never ends. Yeah. Like, it's amazing that I'll see people with like the best careers ever who like don't, their pilot doesn't go or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, you can't escape it. So it's definitely not personal. Um, I think for me, the thing that has been the most helpful is always having that little project that only I can control. So like I said, for me personally, that's usually a play because mm -hmm. I'm like, no one's, I'm going to write this. I'm going to like find the director and the cast. I'm going to put it up myself. No one can reject me from this play because there's, I'm just doing it myself. And I know for a lot of people, it's like making that little short or, you know, whatever. So I think that helps you when you're like, uh, I can't get this thing or I really wanted this thing and I didn't get it. Or, you know, my friend got the thing I really wanted, whatever you at least have that little tiny home base to go back to. Do you, did you ever find that maybe writing those plays helped open a door for something else in your career? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, like, for sure. I, I started fully as a playwright. Like, that's why I went to grad school. I didn't really honestly do that much screenwriting there. So, mm -hmm. like, my first pilot that I wrote was based on this musical that I just like self-produced honestly it started as like I put on this whole musical inside my apartment for like six people at a time and then that moved to like a bigger theater and then I made it a pilot and then like that pilot got me my first film job so it was like this huge snowball effect that just started from me being like this is the only thing I can control mm -hmm. one thing that I just kind of thought of right now was so I feel like there's this like big debate on Twitter sometimes whether or not you have to be in LA to be a writer. How do you feel about that? I don't know. Obviously, I think the pandemic has really changed a lot of our outlooks mm -hmm. about like what is possible in the world. I think to be a writer, all you have to do is write. So you could be living in a cabin in like rural Iowa and you're still a writer mm -hmm. if you wrote something. 
if you want to write for film and TV, um, it's hard to get those jobs without people knowing you. I think that was a big kind of, I didn't know that before I came out here. I was just like, well, if you write the best script ever and you get it in front of the person who like hires people and it's the best script, they'll hire you. Mm -hmm. But they don't know you. You could be like really mean or really difficult or like shy, you know? And so you gotta know people. And that unfortunately kind of means you have to be around a lot of people. So LA is better. But I got my first job while I still lived in Chicago. Like I was living in Chicago when I got hired and then I flew out here. Sweet. So. Is there anything else that you think, you know, would be super helpful for an aspiring writer or a writer's PA to know entering the industry? I think it's the advice everyone gives. Write what you wish you could see. Like, don't write something that you think other people are going to like. Write what you want to see. Um, and besides that, just be really nice to yourself. Like, a lot of people... I used to tour with The Second City, so, like, I worked on a cruise ship like touring around like the Caribbean doing improv and it's amazing how many people would come up to me and be like oh actually I thought about being like a famous comedian but I decided not to like so many people have this idea that they could have just done it but they literally don't do any of it Mm -hmm. so if you're like a writer's PA and you've written one pilot you've truly done more than 95% of people and that's amazing be like yay me don't be hard on yourself like oh i'm just a pa be like oh my gosh literally no one gets to this level Mm -hmm. that's great like celebrate it because that's amazing well thank you so much for your time and for sharing all this great stuff i feel like so many people are going to find it super helpful thank you i was just absolutely touched that you thought of me and it was so good to hear from you janet Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see the last video in this series, go ahead and click the link in the description. If you want to see more, please click that like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I'll see you guys next time.